All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this week's call. We've got Michael McDowell, driver of the number 34 Loves Travel Stops Mustang, joining us for the next 15, 20 minutes. If you've got a question for Michael, by all means, uh, raise your hand and we'll get to just as many questions as we can over the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Let's get kicked off with Rob Tiongson. Rob, why don't you get us started? Go ahead. Thank you, Dan. And thank you for joining us today, Michael. A couple of questions to fire things off. You know, you and your team are on a really great streak. A couple of top 10s heading into Dover. So, I mean, what's it like to have all this momentum and everything clicking together for you and your 34 team? Yeah, it's been nice this last couple of weeks, you know, to, to have some solid finishes. Um, you know, the season's been pretty up and down for us so far. You know, we kicked off the year at Daytona with a decent run and had a fast car at California and Vegas, but kind of struggled, um, you know, the last few weeks at, you know, the short tracks with Richmond and, um, and Phoenix and Martinsville. Um, so it's nice to get some momentum. It's nice to, uh, you know, get things rolling in the right direction. Um, you know, Dover is, is a really fun racetrack, really intimidating. I think we're all a bit nervous with this uh, next-gen car, just, um, you know, not nervous with what's going to happen with it, but more of just how they're going to drive because it's such a fast racetrack, a lot of loading. Um, and so it's going to be, it's gonna be a, a challenge that, that first couple laps when you unload there to see what you have. No, absolutely. And kind of a serious question to ask. I don't mean to rock the boat if it's not something I can ask, but obviously we saw what happened on Monday with Eddie Hamlin's tweet. And I know NASCAR is trying to do a better job with inclusion. What's your thoughts on this when you realize, you know, one of your fellow competitors says what you thought was funny, when in reality, it's probably not a good thing to say. Yeah, you know, I'm, I don't know where to go with all of it. It's kind of why I stay off social media, to be honest with you. Um, you know, everything is taken, you know, so seriously and out of context. And, um, you know, and I think that that's the problem with, with social media is you don't know, you don't know the person's intention. You don't know, you know, what they're trying to communicate. Um, and it's, you know, it's a, it's a dangerous spot for your partners and your team and all the people around you. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have a lot of input. Honestly, I didn't know about it until my, my cousin sent me a text and asked me, Hey, did you see what happened? And I'm like, what do you mean? What did it happen? And so then I had to go look, um, you know, it's just, obviously we're, we're in a, uh, you know, predominant sport and, you know, the athletes and drivers are, you know, held at a, a high standard and, you know, I think that that's okay. And I think that that's good. Um, but at the same time, you know, I feel like we're, you know, it's, it's gotta be super careful everything you say and do. Absolutely. Well, best of luck this weekend, Michael. Hope to see you soon. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Rob. Marty Sakala, you're up. Thanks, Dan. Michael, thanks for the time. And you're making me jealous with the blue skies. We've got snow up in <laughs> Rochester, New York. So uh, starting things off, you've got an average finish of 20.1. Obviously, with the exception of last year, would you consider 2022 uh, the best start you've had in a season? Um, I think it is, you know, other than 2021, like you said, I, you know, as far as having three top tens, you know, in 10 races, that's definitely the best, you know, start that we've had minus last year. Um, and I think there's a lot of potential with this next gen car for us to have more, you know, good results and be in contention. And, um, and, and we were optimistic about that, you know, going into the season that this could be a, a year for us to really have an opportunity to shine and, and to get better results. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I think there's still a lot to come this year and, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, some of the, the tracks that we have circled, um, and seeing where we can stack up against, you know, the competition, but there's a, you know, a tremendous amount of development that's going on right now, you know, and there seems to be teams that are, uh, sorting it out pretty quickly. And so, you know, we have to make sure that we keep up with, you know, the, the rapid pace of the development of a brand new car. I don't think we had you on as well since uh, the Bristol dirt race. Were you surprised that uh, with your road racing background though, you were able to finish in ninth? Uh, I was pretty, you know, I was happy. I, I wouldn't say surprised. Um, I think I finished 12th there last year. So I had a decent run and, and was learning a lot throughout the weekend. Um, but my, my crew chief, Blake Harris, he's got a tremendous amount of uh, dirt experience and from a driving standpoint and from a crew chief standpoint, so I felt like I had a little bit of, a, you know, an upper hand in that regard of somebody that really understood, you know, how the track was changing, what we needed to do change wise, setup wise. So, you know, that felt really good having somebody in your corner that with a lot of experience on the dirt. And I think that that played a big part of our result, you know, getting another top 10. 
Thank you, man. Good luck to you this weekend at Dover. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Marty. Again, if you've got a question for Michael, please raise your hand and uh, we'll get to you uh, in line here. Let's uh, Nathan Solomon. You're up next. Go ahead, Nathan. Thank you. Thanks for uh, thanks for the time today, Michael. Just a couple questions kind of previewing this weekend. Uh, obviously, it's kind of the first concrete race uh, of 2022 with the wider tire. Uh, kind of how do you anticipate that will that will affect tire wear on Sunday? Yeah, we don't know yet. Um, that's one of the big question marks. You know, this this tire in general, um, you know, being wider and and obviously with the wheels, you know, seems to cool a lot better um, than our previous car. And so, you know, a lot of the wear issues and things have been different. Um, you know, I wouldn't say there has been less wear. It's just been different. Um, definitely less heat. Um, but like you said, you know, Dover's concrete, it's, it's pretty abrasive. Um, typically there on a green track, you know, a track that doesn't have any rubber, you're only about 10 or 15 laps into it before you start, you know, seeing cords. Um, and so in that 25 minute pra- or the 20 minute practice that we have, I'm not sure, um, you know, if we'll have a good indication of where things are at, uh, I'm definitely, you know, thankful we're in that second group of practice, um, just because I feel like that first group will lay down some rubber and give us a better indication of, you know, where the tire wear is going to be. Um, but I feel like Goodyear's done a really good job, you know, with not a lot of, um, you know, information and experience with this car, you know, the tires so far have been really good, um, as far as fall off and durability. And so I feel like they've hit it pretty well so far this year and hopefully Dover will be the same. And at times kind of with, with, the, with, the, um, with the Gen 6 car, I think there's a, a bit of a debate kind of about if the speeds were safe or not. Um, what do you kind of think the speeds will be like this weekend with, uh, with the car? Yeah, I think that, you know, lap time will probably be pretty similar um, to what we've seen in the, in the past there. Just with, like you said, the bigger tire, it's going to have a bit more grip. Um, you know, a little bit different aero package, obviously with downforce levels and, and, you know, horsepower, but, you know, I think that it'll actually be pretty close at, at Dover as far as lap time, you know, within three or four tenths of where we were last year. So um, I don't think it'll be a huge, huge, um, you know, difference there. Thank you. All right, Kelly Crandall, how are you? I'm good, Dan. How are you? I'm great. Go ahead. Ask your question for Mr. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Michael, I got a couple here. Let's go back to, you were talking about the car there, about being optimistic about the rest of the year and there's more to come. So it sounds like um, you and, and everybody at Front Row are, are, are pretty high on this car. Is it doing uh, what you guys expected it to as far as competition, as far as you guys adapting to it? Um, I think it's done what we anticipated um, in some regards. You know, I think that the the hardest thing for us has probably been the challenge of just the limited amount of, of practice that you have. And with the newness of this car, um, you know, you want to try a lot of things because it's so new. And so you want to try different packages, different geometries, spring, stiff, soft bars, no bars. There's a lot of things that you want to work through that you can't work through in those 20 minutes that you have leading into the race. Um, so I feel like it's kind of ebbed and flowed a little bit as far as the small teams being able to perform, um, because there's been tracks where it seems like we're closer to the competition than we were last year. And then there's been tracks where we feel like we're pretty similar. Um, but I think that that's going to, you know, in the next few weeks, you know, and, and definitely in the next few months, we'll have a better handle of what we need to do. Um, to get us closer to the competition. So I hope that it plays out how we anticipated it. You know, on the business side, I'm not really sure, you know, as far as the expense and, and whether it's saving the team's money and, and all the things that go along with, um, you know, what made this, you know, move really important. Um, but from a competition standpoint, you know, I feel like we've closed the gaps at some places and, and at others were similar. Uh, but I feel like there's a potential that we will still be able to close the gaps um, even even more so. So I feel good about what the car's done. And I wanted to ask about the playoffs. Obviously, you were in them last year, right, from the first race. So are you thinking about playoffs at this point? Is it something to where you feel like you have you and your team have to back that up and get back in? You know, I definitely feel like um, – you know, you're always thinking about winning a race, which puts you in the playoffs, right? 
um, you know, I think what it does, what it did for me last year and what it did for our team um, really emphasized to us the importance of it, the importance of making the playoffs, the importance of winning a race. I mean, it just did so much for our organization and our partners. And, um, you know, it, it's just a big, big part of our sport to be able to do that. And so more emphasis are on trying to win than, uh, than the playoffs, but the playoffs come with it. Um, you know, added pressure. I don't feel like it's any added pressure because it's already there. You're always trying to perform at a high level and you're always trying to get that win. Um, and we're not thinking about pointing our way into it. I mean, it is possible. We're still early into the season. Um, but we look at it as, you know, we have to win to, to have a spot in that. And so we're just focusing on giving ourselves the best chance of that. Thank you. All right, let's go to Brendan Carroll. Go ahead, Brendan. So obviously NASCAR wanted to have uh, the field closer together with the small teams and the bigger teams. Uh, how, how do you feel the uh, next gen car has been uh, like working with your, your team and getting to like the front? Like we've seen Petty GMS, uh, Petty GMS running up front, uh, pretty regularly now uh we, we've seen uh track track house with now with two wins on the season uh so can you tell me a bit about like that yeah so i think that the car has done a good job as far as leveling those things out um but you know those organizations that you mentioned you know, also had a big influx of cash and capital come into those programs and as you guys know in motorsports that's a big part of development and having, you know, the right resources and funds to get the right people and do all those things. So I'm not surprised that those teams are more competitive than they were last year. Um, so that that's, I don't think that, you know, that is a great indication of where all the small teams will be, um, you know, because those weren't small organizations. Those were big organizations that got bigger um, with new ownership and, you know, with, um, you know, new opportunities. So I think those, those circumstances are a little bit different. Um, but I do feel like that there is more of an opportunity with this next gen car than with the previous, you know, generation. Thank you. Have a good, uh, race on Sunday. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Brendan. Let's go to Casey Campbell. Hello, Casey, go ahead. Casey, you're muted, bud. Oh, there I am. There you go. Um, hope you're well, Dan. And Michael, I uh, hope you're well as well. Um, so going into this um, this season, you were 10 races in. How do you feel like you in front? Where do you guys think you're at right now? Yeah, I mean, even though we've had some good good runs here the last couple of weeks, I don't feel like we're where we need to be. Um but I feel like there's the potential to get to where we need to be. So I'm not discouraged by where we're at, um, but it's, it's not gone as well as we'd hoped. Um, but at the same time, like I said, we're, we're learning this new car, we're learning these new packages and uh, we, there's been places we just haven't hit it yet. And so um, as long as we can start stringing together, like we have the last few weeks some good results and keep building the momentum. Um, but the, you know, what's important is having a shot at winning a race. And so we just are continuing to work towards that where we can be closer to the front to give yourself that opportunity. And um, we're not there yet, but I feel like we have, you know, all the things that we need to get there. We just haven't got there yet. And apologies if this question's already been asked. I joined late. Um, how, what's it been like working with Blake this early on in this kind of season? Yeah, Blake's done a good job. Um, you know, it's been a big transition for him. I mean, obviously, not just with his role uh, changing, but, you know, taking over our program with a brand new car and a lot of changes at front row. And, and you know, I think if this would have happened last year with the old car, it'd be a much smoother transition because everybody's learning so much so quickly. Um, but he's done a good job and I, yeah, I enjoy working with him. I think he's got all the stuff that it takes to be really successful in the sport and, um, he's a good leader and he's got a good personality to lead our group. And, um, and so we're just building and working on it. All right. Thanks, Michael. Talk soon. Yeah. Thank you.